We are considering today large-scale standardized assessment and the uses and abuses of these assessments. First, the utility of standardized assessments to improve student learning outcomes in the school. The utility of large-scale standardized assessments to improve student learning outcomes is limited as these assessments occur infrequently and the data is often not easily accessible to classroom practitioners. There are other types of assessments which provide more granular data, more rapidly, and in a manner that teachers can analyze and act upon. In my own school, I led a professional learning act community for several years, um, and we focused on improving student in achievement on SAT-like reading tasks. The SAT data was useful to us, but more useful for informing our practice was the data that we generated from our own assessments. Often those assessments were drawn from commercially available sources, but sometimes we adapted materials um, that, that were related to our curriculum. Our focus became not the test data, but on raising student achievement by altering our practices as teachers. Though this didn't liberate us entirely from the tyranny of the test, it did free us to focus on what worked in our classroom for general literacy, rather than simply teaching a test prep class in lieu of our curriculum. At the district and state level, these assessments are often used to compare schools, rank programs, and in some cases, rank or evaluate teachers. These uses should be resisted as they have little to do with the improvement of learning outcomes. As the firebrand Alfie Kahn notes, standardized testing has swelled and mutated to a point where it now threatens to swallow our schools whole. There are other and better options for teachers if we are seeking to improve our practice with students. Next, regarding national and international assessments. Both may be useful on a periodic basis for researchers and policymakers. National tests may provide information for the development of broadly drawn policies and highlight inequities for attention. International tests may be useful for those who are humble enough to learn from other nations and peoples and to share with others while acknowledging the multitude of differing cultural and educational contexts in which these assessments occur. In our globally connected and competitive world, these tests may serve as broad benchmarks, but should be used with considerable caution at the local and school level. Aside from these broadly construed comparisons, these large scale national and international assessments have limited value on the, for the day-to-day -day classroom. As Murphy notes, the reality is that equity must be determined one student at a time. So national testing may provide useful benchmarks though. For example, the 2019 benchmark noted that um, 37% of students were college ready, which brings us to the third issue of testing regarding college admissions, or related to college admissions, excuse me. As the father of two college students, I do see value in college admissions testing, but not as a sorting mechanism for admissions rather as a post-admission placement instrument. Students may gain advanced or, or remedial standing based on their test scores, and the farce of equity in administration of the pre-admission testing would be eliminated. These tests should not be taken during secondary school hours or be the focus of secondary instruction. Rather, they should be used as placement instruments within universities. Those universities that are highly selective have other ways of engaging in their 
process. Thank you very much for considering with me the benefits and downfalls, the uses and abuses of large-scale standardized assessment.